Wow. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm absolutely hopeless without an audience, actually. So, my name's Jean Bond. I set up about 20 years ago with my husband and a couple of other people, set up uh, and ran the Atlow Mill Centre for Emotional Education. So I should know better than to be hardly able to speak because I'm so nervous, shouldn't I? <laughs> but I don't. Um, I also want to introduce you to two other people that I brought with me today, okay? They're a bit invisible, but they'll become clearer later. One is narcissistic Nerissa. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pretty exceptional, really. She's uh, a great performer. She knows exactly what she's talking about. She's always right. She hates being criticised. She's very good at criticising other people, though. Very good at criticising. Very, very reluctant to praise other people. She doesn't like that. Because they might be better than her, and that would be an absolute anathema to her. The other person I brought here today is little Jeannie. Uh, she's about five, actually. And she is so scared of being here. Her knees are knocking. She can hardly speak from fear. And it's narcissistic Nerissa, her, that gets her into all this trouble. If only she'd just leave her alone and let her have a quiet life. But that's not how Nerissa is, is it? I want to tell you a little bit more. Oh, it's already there. Great. OK. So, I want you to look at this slide. This is from John Bradshaw, by the way, who's written some amazing books about childhood and... Um, and how to heal the wounds of childhood. I don't think you ever can, actually, but you can certainly overcome them. So I'd like, you to, I'd like to invite you to look at this. He calls this more than human. This is what I've described as a narcissistic person. More than human and the less than human. What's the opposite of a more than human person? He says is a less than human person. Somebody who does all this stuff, right? Put your hand up if you can identify more with this side than that side. Oh, good. Thank you. That's really marvellous. And put your hand up if you can, if you more identify with this side than that side. And what about if you think, I'm not in either of those places? <laughs> Who doesn't think they're either of those places? You probably are. <laughs> <coughs> you just don't want to say so. If you'd asked me if I was over that side a few years ago, I'd have said rubbish. Of course not. Neither am I over here. I mean, who'd want to be over there? Terrible place to be. Unfortunately, I was doing a psychotherapy course and I had to see a psychotherapist myself. Otherwise, no way would I have done that. Did I need to see a psychotherapist? Definitely not. Nothing wrong with me. Okay, so I saw the psychotherapist and after three weeks, three sessions, he said to me, you know, your problem is you've got a narcissistic disorder. <laughs> so I said, oh, really, that's very interesting. Thinking, what the hell does that mean? So he told me briefly and then he told me to go away and read about it, which I did. Having read about it, I came back and I said, uh, Oh, that's really interesting. Thank you for telling me that, I think. <laughs> and what do I do about it? And he said, you know, that's the first question a narcissistic person asks. <laughs> and I had to laugh. He said, and that, the fact that you've laughed, is probably the thing that will save you. So I thought, well, that's a relief. I then went away and wanted to kill him. It's the first question that person asks because... Being told they've got any kind of problem means that they're flawed and defective. And that's not what they want to hear. So actually, those of you who may be on this side might really hate what I've got to say today. Because I did. I hated it. So, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because 
the more than human side of this equation leads to all the destructive destructiveness that we experience in this world today. It leads to, at a, at a lower level, bullying in the workplace and in the school playground, viciousness from teachers who then destroy the pupils that they're supposed to be actually contributing to. It leads to war, sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse, every kind of abuse, abuse you can think of, domestic violence, murder, serial killers, Saddam Hussein, Hitler, <laughs> the death of six million Jews. That's what's at the bottom of all of that. So I don't know about you, but I think we need to do something about that, don't you think? Who would agree with that? We need to do something about it. You don't agree? Have you got hands? Put your hands up if you agree. Thank you. That's terrific. So, what do you do about it? Well, I've written two things on my hand because these are my notes. The first thing that I realised I had to develop was humility. Oh, now that was a hard one. I mean, what's that? Humility... I discovered was about owning up to making mistakes, admitting that you haven't got it right, and thinking that you might have something to learn. Ooh, that was a big one. And the second thing I realised you had to develop was vulnerability. And that was something, letting people see little genie was something that narcissistic Narissa was determined never to allow not under any circumstances. So how did I go about it? How did I go about being able to talk about that part of myself that at one time I would never have admitted to having? In fact, both parts of myself, actually. Well, that guy did me the biggest favour when he told me I had a narcissistic disorder. Actually, he then said it wasn't a disorder. That was a bit extreme. I had tendencies towards a narcissistic personality. So the biggest favour, because what happened was I began to be aware of when narcissistic Nerissa was in the driving seat, of when she reared her head. I could hear her. I could hear her, I could feel in my body how if somebody criticised me, I would rear up on my hind legs ready to strike. And I didn't do it. I just watched and I thought, that's interesting. How very interesting. I could see when she wanted to impress people, when she wanted to perform and outperform people, which is an anathema when you're doing this sort of thing, isn't it? <laughs> so you better give me points at the end. <laughs> well, give her points. She likes the points. I don't care. <laughs> so that was the first key, was awareness. The second one was to realise the humility bit. So I started, when I was teaching courses, because I teach a lot of courses about emotional education, I started to say things like, do you know, I think you might be right to people who were arguing with me. Well, that was amazing. I thought, God, I've never done that before. That was terrific. <laughs> I started owning up to making mistakes. I started to admit that I couldn't cope with things, that I was out of my depth. Um, narcissistic Nerissa gets me into a lot of situations where I've bitten off more than I can chew, let me tell you, because she's got very grandiose ideas and she thinks she can do anything. And one of those was a, a unit I set up in a school in Leamington for, all the, for the, the very worst pupils in the school, the kids with the worst behaviour. And after th six weeks, I realised I couldn't do it. I sat in the car park, terrified of going into the school, and along came Marie, who was my school phobic, and she said, what are you doing there, Jean? And I said, I can't go into school, I'm, I, I just can't cope. And she said, I know exactly how you feel, because she was a school phobic. She said, you come in with me to the unit, and I'll make you a cup of tea, and if you can't cope, you can go home. I said, well, that's very good of you, thank you. So I went in. And the other kids came slamming into the unit, as they did, through the door. Yeah! 
and Maria would say, shut up, Jean can't cope today. <laughs> and they looked at me and went, ooh. And within minutes, they were all sitting there quietly at their desks, absolutely unheard of. And one of them eventually said, why can't you cope, Jean? And I said, because I don't know what I'm doing and I can't do it. I'm not doing you any good at all and I just need to stop. And they said, no, you don't understand, Jean. We're very difficult. <laughs> nobody, can, nobody can cope with us. And we, and we think you're great and please don't leave. So I had a marvellous conversation with them. And you know, in that moment, my relationship with those young people totally changed. And they started to be able to talk about how they really felt. So instead of kicking off and having tantrums, on one occasion, when one kid, uh, I asked him to carry a load of infant books through the school to the unit, and he said, what, me? Carry those books through the school, me? I said, yeah. He said, oh, loads of embarrassment. So I said, so can you... Okay, so you're embarrassed. Can you carry the books and your embarrassment through the school to the unit? <laughs> and he said, yeah, and he did. Now, at one time, that kid would have just effed and blinded and called me all the names under the sun. So it was a remarkable breakthrough. And I've got 41 minutes and what was seconds. And what was I going to tell you? Yes, it was a remarkable breakthrough. So I just want you to know, those people who are sitting there thinking, I am on that side, really, but I'm not going to own up to it, own up to it because it will set you free and by your example you'll set everybody else free including those dictators and all the violent people in the world let's set them free it doesn't take a lot thank you very much for listening Perfect.